Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Charles Benz, and I'm here to present my protocol on long COVID syndrome. This has taken several months to get to this point, but this is based on the best science available for evidence-based treatments for all viruses and chronic illnesses. And so let's find out a little bit more about why this virus is so different and so special and being so threatening to so many people around the world. So this is different because this virus, it's new in the sense that we don't really have anything in our system, our immune system that can tell us this is this particular virus and we know what to do with it. It spreads more easily on more surfaces from animals and plants as well as between humans. Uh, the virus can remain in the air for three hours which may be very different from other viruses. Uh, the virus can remain in the eye fluid, the testes, and the intestines and not be detected by blood tests. This makes this virus very unique. Uh, COVID-19 can multiply 100 times in 48 hours compared to 20 times in 48 hours for the SARS uh, virus. Uh, the mortality rate is 20 times higher, 0 0.1 versus 2.0 for the seasonal flu. So you can see it's a, more, it's a stronger virus. And one of the things we notice about it is it creates the cytokine storm. Cytokines are the body's viral defense team. And when a person is infected and they can be infected more than once over a four, three or four day period, uh, it, symptoms will occur at that point. But this depends on what the viral load was and what the viral set point is in the body. So the longer you wait to treat it, the more difficult it's going to be to treat. The virus can overwhelm the immune system very quickly. Uh, the lungs in particular are unable to make oxygen and deliver it to other parts of the body. And this affects the heart, the kidney, the brain, the intestines, the liver. In fact, every part of the body needs oxygen. It is infected, affected by this virus. The virus also has the capability of damaging cells all on its own. Now, this is uh, an early slide that came within the first year of this virus where we started to see this damage being done in the heart and the blood vessels and the kidneys and the brain and the lungs and the intestines. We now know that it's also infecting a lot of other places in the body as well. The main reason why this is such a dangerous virus is it, it really concentrates on the lungs more than anywhere else. Lung cells become inflamed and the immune system made up of T cells and B cells and interferon and glutathione, they flood into the lungs in order to resolve this issue. Uh, the response can be too extreme, and this is true in this coronavirus. And this is one of the things that's the main problem. That's because you see so many people on ventilators in the hospital. So flood builds up and the cells are destroyed by the virus themselves. So this combination of oxygen depredation and the actual dis destruction of cells in the body with this virus are the dual mechanisms by which this virus does damage to our cells. So the oxygen production in the cells is restricted, pneumonia can develop, and then oxygen is restricted to the organs, and then we end up with organ failure, which is one of the major fatal reactions to this virus. And each of these viruses in the lungs have a special key that connects them. And this virus is connected to uh, the spike protein, but it's also connected to the ACE receptors, AE2 receptors. These are receptors that are very important in the body. And in their role, they take amino acids and they break them down so that they can be used in these organs and other places in the body to actually make energy and to make the defense mechanisms for those cells. So in the first instance, these AC2, AEC2 receptors are very important. Well, the virus seems to have known that. And so the virus has decided, this is where we're gonna to go to get into these bodies. In one study, 95% of asymptomatic patients experienced some cellular damage. Even though they didn't have a lot of symptoms, the virus was still inside doing its damage in other parts of the body. And here are some of the examples of that. In over 300 studies, 
It indicated that 33% of COVID patients were experiencing neurological complications and brain fog. Uh, irregular blood clotting it has been found in 31% of cases in just one study. Now there's lots of studies that show it even higher than that, but this was the study that we originally accessed. In one study, 78% of recovered uh, patients had some level of heart damage. So this uh, myocardosis is a really serious problem. And this is happening in younger people, younger males of 16, 17, 18, and 20 are having these heart challenges. Kidney damage was found in 36% of patients in one study. And the doctors at Mount Sinai have indicated that this could lead to a serious kidney disease problem in the future. And the tissue of the COVID-19 uh, cells in the lungs has does 900% more damage through COVID than it does in the seasonal flu. 900% more damage in the lungs from COVID than from the seasonal flu in the, in the lungs. Now, one of the explanations for all of this comes from a, a program that I developed for uh, how to prevent disease in the early stages. And in this case, what we found is almost every disease goes through six stages of cellular deterioration. First, these cells get stressed, then they get weakened, then they get challenged, then they get uh, dysfunctional, then they become mutated, and then they become diseased. Well, this usually happens over several months or several years, but in the case of COVID-19, this is happening within days. That's why this is such a, a, a serious virus and has to be contended with and dealt with in a very serious manner. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to catch this virus in its very earliest iterations when it's stressed, before the cells get weakened and challenged and dysfunctional. If we can do that, then we have a very high probability of success in getting people treated initially if they get the virus, and then if they become long haulers, again, the sooner we can get this identified, the sooner we can get them to reverse the ones that are challenged and, and weakened and, and stressed. So now we're gonna look at what, what is actually being done in the body as a result of this COVID-19 virus. So for instance, we know that nutrition is probably the number one cause of a weak immune system and therefore probably the number one cause of damage in the body uh, caused by the COVID-19 virus. I, I want to alert you to work that's been done by Dr. Bruce Ames, one of the probably most prominent and recognized nutritional scientists in the world. And what Dr. Ames has said is, when we consume food, we use it in three different strategies. In other words, there's a process, a, a sort of a priority process for the use of our nutrients. In the first case, these nutrients are used to fight germs and viruses and to help our reproduction process. In that instance, probably two vegetables a day is enough, but maybe not. But in some cases, we see these asymptomatic people, they may be eating two or three vegetables a day and they may get this initial protection. But, and you move to level two, any nutrients that are left after they've been used in the first stage, that is being used for metabolic functions like the making of hormones and the making of neurotransmitters. So what we know is when this virus impacts parts of the body that deal with hormones, like the thyroid and, and the testes and the ovaries, then we start to see these problems. We know that people aren't getting enough of the right nutrients, especially brain fog. You can see neurotransmitters are also being made in the second level of the use of nutrients in the body. The third priority is for the treatment of chronic disease and aging. In this case, we've now found that people need at least seven to nine vegetables and fruits a day, mostly vegetables, if they're going to prevent and if they're going to reverse any chronic illness, including COVID-19. We should add that chronic illness has increased dramatically over the last 60 years. 60 years ago, only 10% of the population had chronic illness, and now it's over 70%. And a lot of these people have chronic illnesses beyond just one, they have two and three sometimes. And this really leads to the fact that too many people are eating red meat, dairy, sugar, and not enough vegetables. 
This is proven in a big study that was done by the National Cancer Institute of over 16,000 people. They could not find one person with a truly healthy diet. In fact, a majority of them were deficient in 11 out of 14 categories. So what we know is if people want to get to that third level of defense that Bruce Ames talked about, they need seven to nine helpings of vegetables and fruits every day. They're probably not going to be able to do that or willing to do it. We recommend a green powder drink with a lot, enough nutrients in it to give them that seven to nine helpings every day. As we age, there's also something really interesting happening. Um, when we age, we make less digestive enzymes, less probiotics, less glutathione, less superoxide dismutase, which are our body's antioxidants. And so when these things decline, that means that's changing the way our body is processing foods and using them for all the things that we need them for. And so we recommend most people over 40 take a digestive enzyme, especially with any cooked meal. Let's take another look at some of the factors that influence this COVID-19 virus. First of all, we need to build a healthy immune system. And so I'm gonna start with that as kind of the basis before I get to the long haul pro protocol. People need to eat a Mediterranean plant-based diet with those seven to nine helpings of fruits and vegetables and avoid the dairy, avoid the sugar, avoid the salt, do avoid the red meat. They need to take supplements. I mean, there, it's almost impossible for any person to get all the nutrients they need from food alone. I have never seen one study that verified that. Doctors say it, but I ask them, where's the science? They don't know where the science is. So you need to have a multiple vitamin, probably some vitamin C, vitamin D, digestive enzymes before cooked meals, some magnesium, some B complex, some zinc. And during the flu season, I like nanoparticle silver as a solution to try to prevent and to treat any viruses or colds that come in. There's 117 studies showing that the nanoparticle silver really works. And if you do have a weak blood count, your white blood cells are about 40% of your immune system, you can take vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin B6, and astragalus, and that will actually increase the white blood cell count in your body and strengthen your immune system. You also see that by an increased number on your uh, absolute uh, lymphocytes because that's one of the measures of the white blood cell uh, protection in the body. You want to avoid toxins and detoxify periodically if you can. You want to increase uh, your exercise using aerobic and strength and flexibility. Uh, you want to avoid stress. You want to use yoga and meditation. You want to get seven to nine hours of sleep every day. And in the initial case where you have a flu or a cold, you want to begin to treat it with zinc in the throat and maybe even some silver. And you want to get extra doses of vitamin C and D and quercetin with zinc and olive leaf extract. Our protocol when you first get one of these viruses is to do something on a rotating basis every hour. And this seems to resolve a vast majority of cases. We also want to try to make sure people are eating with a lot of the antiviral foods that are out there. And we know there are certain foods that have proven antiviral capabilities. Uh, wild blueberries, pomegranates, sweet potatoes, coconut oil, sprouts and parsley, uh, cilantro, uh, garlic, ginger, turmeric, red clover, fennel, and, and kale. Eat as many of those foods as you can on a regular basis, and you're actually protecting yourself from all viruses. And, and, and to COVID as well. Now, I wanna take a few minutes to just talk about two of the superstars of uh, my treatment protocol. The first one is vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antiviral and, and it also helps to neutralize pathogens in the body because it has an extra electron. And most of these pathogens are missing an electron. So it's kind of like an exchange process. The vitamin C says, oh, I see that you're missing an electron. Let me give you the extra one that I have. Vitamin C also helps to make glutathione in the body, another antioxidant. And vitamin C assists in making uh, inter uh, an antiviral called interferon. And here are some of the references for uh, this from vitamin C in the Nutrients Magazine. 256 references for vitamin C in the treatment of the immune system. 
All right, vitamin C versus sugar. This is a very important consideration because unfortunately, sugar has a very sim similar molecular structure to vitamin C. And so if you don't have enough vitamin C in your body, then if you eat sugar, sugar can fill up the white blood cells. And you may find that you're depressing your immune system by 75% or more if your white blood cells are filled with, with sugar instead of vitamin C. And so we recommend a very low sugar diet and higher doses of vitamin C that can, can help to control this. We even recommend sometimes intravenous vitamin C, which bypasses the digestive system and gets enough into your body to fill it up with all the vitamin C that are needed by the cells and by the white blood cells. And another thing that we recommend is that if you're in this viral situation, um, either as a preventative or a treatment, there's a lot of evidence showing that five to 10,000 milligrams a day will actually give you ultimate protection. You have to do that over staggered doses over the whole day, and you have to be careful for uh, bowel intolerance. And so you wanna increase your levels of vitamin C gradually until you can get to the point where you don't experience any bowel intolerance. And how do you optimize vitamin C? Well, as I said, uh, about 500 milligrams each time every four hours is a way to get started on this. You wanna include bioflavonoids because that's how vitamin C occurs in nature. In fruits and vegetables, there's usually bioflavonoids included. And so that means that vitamin C with the vitamin, with the uh, bioflavonoids is going to be in, uh, injected or used into your body a lot more effectively. You can, you can take fruits and vegetables with your vitamin C supplement because that's really important because that will also give you a lot of the cofactors that are there that are necessary for vitamin C to get into the cells. I already mentioned that vitamin C uh, is important for the white blood cells, but you gotta be careful about fruits because two fruits a day actually might be too much sugar. So we like to do the low sugar fruits with the high antioxidant and the high nutrient value like apples and blueberries. You wanna increase it gradually, as I said before, to avoid uh, bowel intolerance. And you want to try to get your vitamin C, not from orange juice, which has too much sugar in it, but from those fruits and vegetables have lower sugar and from supplements. You also want to realize that vitamin C can recite, be recycled with vitamin E and alpha lipoic acid. So when you put them together, you get a much stronger presence of vitamin C in the body. So what you really need to know is that all vitamin C supplements are not equal and you need to make sure you do your scientific study and analysis to make sure you're getting a really good one. In fact, Life Extension Magazine has now come out with a new vitamin C that actually is able to be utilized throughout your body with one dose in the morning. It's been studied, it's effective, and I would recommend that you look into it. So, Vitamin D is the other superstar. There's 108 evidence-based studies on this. And so we know that we get it from the sun, we get it from omega-rich fish and from supplements. You need to get 50 to 90 nanograms a day in your blood to make sure you have enough defense to do all the things that vitamin D can do. Now, the best way to get your vitamin D is through sunshine. And you need to have 20 minutes of exposure, maximum exposure to the sun in the right position in the sky and covered only 20, 40% of your body needs, it needs to be covered. You can get up to 20,000 international units of vitamin D just by doing this. Then you can put the sunscreen on and get the protection that you need. So vitamin, vitamin D controls hundreds, if not thousands of on and off switches in the body. Just think that about 80% of all genetic material is on and off switches. So picture a room with a lot of on and off switches and 80% of that room would be filled with switches to turn vitamin D off and on. Vitamin D helps to make an antibiotic called cathelicidin and that kills viruses. And Dr. Cannell recommends 50,000 international units daily for five days for treatment when you have this virus and five to 10,000 daily for a maintenance during the flu season. So there's lots of evidence about vitamin D, and here's some more of that evidence that we can see. This was a study done by Grassroots Health, 
Now, there have been studies before from the NIH and from uh, the Mayo Clinic prevent, about preventing viruses. We don't hear about them too much in the media because there's too much emphasis on uh, prescription drugs these days. Uh, but no other prescription drug, no other molecule at all can do a job better than vitamin D can at preventing cancer and at preventing and treating viruses. So vitamin D3 controls as many as 2,000 genes for chronic illness and for viruses like COVID. This study from grassroots showed that levels as low as 30 nanograms per milliliter gave a 98% effective treatment for COVID-19. This is higher than most of the vaccines, all of the vaccines, in fact. And so you could say that high levels of vitamin D3 are as good as protection against COVID-19 as the vaccines are. You could say that. Uh, so let's take a look at the new protocol that I developed on long hauler pro, uh, COVID. This long hauler uh, repair process was developed in early of 2020, around July, when the first long hauler uh, cases were emerging. And I had a case to come to me with a person who was a distance runner, ate very healthy, took a lot of supplements, but he waited too long to get into a protocol to treat this. He didn't think he was going to, he thought it may be the regular flu and he was just going to sort of push it off. Anyway, he found out that he couldn't do that. And so he emailed me and I said, okay, uh, I've done a lot of research on viruses and a lot of research on treating chronic illness and how to repair and recover from chronic illness. So I said, I'm going to put these two base knowledges together and I'm going to try to create a protocol for you. And so after two or three days of research into these protocols on how to treat chronic illness and, and how to treat viruses, I came up with this protocol, which is a six step process. And so this first step is to reduce the viral presence. And so we know through the scientific studies that I've done that vitamin C, vitamin D, olive leaf extract, zinc, and molecular hydrogen all are very effective in pushing back this virus. We also know that we need to reduce inflammation in the body because COVID-19 is an inflammatory infection. And we know from our studies that infection and infl inflammation can be treated with fish oil, uh, curcumin, and specialized pro-resolving mediators. There are plenty of other anti-inflammatories but these three are sufficient in my estimation to push back the inflammation in the body in order to get the repair process started. But before we do the repair process, we have to make sure the cells in the body are ready and able with all the energy necessary to do all the jobs that they're supposed to do. And so we wanted to include in this protocol magnesium and berberine and coenzyme Q10 because those are all things that actually optimize the energy production in the body so that now the cells can take all the nutrients that they're getting and utilize them thoroughly and completely in every cell in the body. And you can see that we've included the brain, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, the intestines and the blood vessels. Well, those are the main ones, but every place in the body gets the benefit of these nutrients. Then we go to step four, which is to enhance the body's readiness for healing. There we have to concentrate on people eating a plant-based Mediterranean diet. Chew your foods very thoroughly. Take a digestive enzyme before any cooked meal and take probiotics at breakfast time in order to enhance your intestines ability to actually break down the nutrients and assimilate them into your cells as needed. The fifth step is to stimulate the tissue repair process and there are special nutrients that can help to do that. Vitamin E can help to repair damage in the liver. Uh, vitamin B helps to repair damage almost everywhere in the body. Uh, NAD is a form of niacin that helps to replace every cell on a regular basis, making sure that they are replaced with healthy cells rather than unhealthy cells. Pygnogenol has been proven to repair damage in the brain caused by stroke. So we know it can repair damage in the brain caused by COVID as well. And uh, modified citrus pectin is very powerful in repairing damage to the heart and the brain and the lungs and most other organs in the body as well. 
And we know from our experience with the first couple of cases that when people get their symptoms resolved, sometimes they go off the protocol too quickly. When that happens, they have a relapse. And so what we realized was they have to be on the protocol for three to six months in order to have all the cells be replaced on a regular basis so that they can end up with full recovery and full repair. And that's why it's important to sustain this treatment over the period of time that was recommended. So here are the specific things that we are, we're including. COVID-19, uh, curcumin, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, vitamin B, uh, vitamin D3, molecular hydrogen, uh, specialized pro-resolving mediators, uh, nicotinamide, adenyl uh, nucleotide, uh, modified citrus pectin, pycnogenol, olive leaf complex, uh, omega-3, berberine, magnesium, probiotics, and digestive enzymes. And I'd just like to point out a couple of things. You can see in here that each, each nutrient is doing something unique and different. And so that's why it's so important to include all of them so that we get full coverage of all the cells that can be impacted in the body as the body's going through this repair process. So uh, it's very important to know, however, that of all the cases that, that I've treated with this protocol, about 90% of them have gotten full resolution with just the basic treatment that was just outlined. However, some people come into this with some existing challenges either a brain challenge or a heart challenge or a lung challenge or an intestinal challenge. When that happens, we've had to use what we call adjunctive therapies because these are special situations. In some of the cases, for instance, we had to recommend inhalers because people continue to have some challenges in their lungs and their sinuses. So we found two inhaler, inhalers. Uh, these are brand names, Lignosis and uh, Immune Aid First Defense and they can help to resolve some of these sinus and these lung problems just with these inhalers. Then sometimes the virus gets into the intestines and this can cause havoc to your digestive system. What we found to be useful there is liquid colloidal silver, a nanoparticle is the best, uh, coconut oil in capsule form, a thousand milligrams, and then there's a special bacteria called megaspore that can actually close the gaps in the intestines that are caused when these, when the intestines get dysfunctional and they allow things to get through uh, unnecessarily into the bloodstream. And Megaspore is the best supplement to be able to help to repair those gaps in the intestines. Blood clots are also an issue. And we like to have people use the D-dimer test uh, in order to find out where the new blood clots have been occurring over the last 10 days to two weeks. And we think that upping the dose of fish oil and using enzymes like nanokinase and serapeptase also helps to make the blood more easily flow through the body. And you have to be careful because all of these things are blood thinners. And so you have to make sure you check with your doctor to make sure your blood thinning uh, isn't too much, if you, especially if you take medications for it. So you have to test to make sure your, your blood thinness is at the right level. The racing heart syndrome is very common among these long haulers. And so we increase the berberine, we increase the CoQ10, we increase the astaxanthin, we increase the magnesium. Uh, we also consider adding a hyperbaric oxygen therapy and high dose of, uh, of L-taurine, about 2000 milligrams a day. The hyperbaric oxygen therapy is great because it forces oxygen into every cell in the body and it can actually help to resolve cancer and COVID and a lot of other illnesses in the body because of its oxygenation capabilities. If somebody is a cancer patient, we want to make sure they measure their immune system. We have a test later that we'll tell you about that does that, but they mainly want to make sure they're measuring their lymphocytes and their vitamin D3 levels, because those are the places where you can see whether your immune system is really working as effectively as it should. In this case, if your immune system is weakened, we want you to increase your vitamin D3, your vitamin E, vitamin A, astragalus, which is a, uh, our nerve, and vitamin B6, because these have been proven to increase the white blood cell count in your body. And, in, and, and, and lots of cancer patients are already weakened uh, because of this in their immune system. And this will help them to get levels high enough that they can keep their cancer at bay and they can keep the COVID at bay as well. 
uh, brain fog. Uh, <clears throat> you need to measure your homocysteine levels uh, and, and make sure that they're satisfactory because homocysteine is uh, levels of vitamin B6, B12, and folate. This is important because brain fog can actually be an ongoing consequence of the COVID-19 virus. In this case, we want to increase your levels of vitamin B complex. We, use, we want to use increased probiotics. We increase vitamin D3 levels. We well, want to use a different form of magnesium here, magnesium threonate, which gets into the blood, through the blood-brain barrier a lot easier than other forms of magnesium. Increasing coconut oil and maybe considering using lithium orotate and uh, fossil fetal chlorine and increased levels of pycnogenol. These are ways that we've gotten brain fog to be resolved in a vast majority of long haulers. And if you're someone who uses prescription drugs, we want to make sure that you test your DNA damage because prescription drugs will do that, toxins will do that. And so you want to use a test called the 8-OHGD. And this test will determine whether you have uh, sustained a lot of accumulated DNA damage in your cells. If that's true and has happened, we want to add resveratrol, quercetin, and milk thistle for the liver in order to help to resolve uh, this damage. And you may want to consider a detoxification program called Clear Change from Metagenics. Uh, when toxins are at home at the work, it's, it's important to know about it because 90% of toxins occur inside, not outside. And, and you need to find sources for things like mold and chemical products. And so when you know that you're, you're having difficulty getting your lungs resolved and getting your COVID resolved, you have to look here for a possible solution because if you get rid of all the toxins that, that, are, that are being consumed in your body, in your home, or in your workplace, then you're going to find your resolution is going to be a lot easier. And we recommend high quality air filters and high quality water filters to make sure you're getting things cleaned up enough that your body can use all the nutrients that it needs to get all the recovery that's possible. And in the case of stomach issues, some people have this virus in their stomach or they already have a weak virus or a weak stomach for other reasons. There's a product called Nature's Lining. It's basically a zinc formula that actually repairs the, uh, the stomach lining about 30 days, taking just two capsules or two tablets a day. We also want to recommend that people take digestive enzymes with each cooked meal because that will also help to get the stomach uh, resolved because it won't have to work as hard. So now we've, we've covered all of these uh, treatments and we need to just consider what the initial defense strategy is, because people want to know also, how do we resolve this initially? And so this is my initial COVID defense strategy. First line of defense is the throat and the sinuses. Um, so I recommend uh, if you feel anything happening, put some silver up your nose and into your sinuses as deep as you can get it. Uh, for your throat, use zinc and vitamin C and zinc lozenges and silver lozenges. Um, at, 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 at the recommended doses that, that for vitamin C and D and silver, and, and you want to take these different nutrients with the foods they come in, like fruits, vegetables, salmon, sardines, eggs, and cod liver oil. So you always try to take the nutrient, the supplement, with the food that they come from, if possible, because of the cofactors. Chew your food thoroughly, 20 to 30 times. Small particles are really important for assimilation of all the nutrients into your body. As we age, we said before, you make less enzymes and stomach acid and probiotics and glutathione. So take these as supplements when you get the age of 40. And everybody should be on a low sugar diet because it can compromise your immune system up to 75%. So again, the alternative solution for me, uh, not alternative, it's mainstream for me, when somebody gets COVID, treat it as quickly as possible with vitamin C, vitamin D, silver, uh, olive leaf extract, and, and do this on a regular basis. And so this will, this will get rid of this virus very quickly in the initial stages and you won't become a long hauler. And these are just some of the scientific references. Uh, I didn't have a chance to include them all, but you can see for zinc, there's, there's a very good scientific reference uh, for the effectiveness of zinc against viruses. There's other scientific references for alpha-lipoic acid, vitamin A, lorisidin, which comes from uh, coconut oil, olive leaf extract, and uh, pectisol C. So 
you can see that there are really good scientific references over the last 20 years that have been used in different viruses and in different viral infection situations. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these included in my protocol. And so this is the uh, immune defense uh, strategy that I mentioned before. Uh, this is an actual uh, test that you can buy on my website, drcharlesbenz.com. And it includes uh, the vitamin, the omega-3-6 ratio, your levels of vitamin D3, your vitamin C levels, your CoQ10 levels, your C-reactive protein levels, which is your inflammation marker, your 8 OHGD levels, which is your DNA to toxic, uh, toxin test, your GGT, which is your liver function test, your glycomark glucose test, which is measuring the actual per per percentage of glucose that's getting into your cells. And, and that's important because sugar is one of those things we want to make sure it gets into your cells as efficiently as possible. And then there's the like lipos, uh, lymphocytes. This is your white blood cell count and your uh, homocysteine methylation test. These 10 tests, while they cost us $314, it's a good test to determine whether your immune system is functioning as well as it should. And so that's, uh, that's the final recommendation that I'm gonna make for today. And uh, I encourage everyone to uh, Review the video over and over again if things went too fast for you and consult your doctor always and try to get them to understand all the things that you're trying to do and get their cooperation if possible. And sometimes you have to use a functional medicine doctor to do that because your conventional doctor won't know enough about this. Your naturopathic doctor may know more about it as well. So if necessary, if you even have to go into a virtual treatment program with a functional medicine or a naturopathic doctor, these are the kind of doctors that really understand this protocol. And maybe we'll be able to add things to it that can be helpful to you in your specific situation. So I've tried to give you a good overview of the protocol, how it works, how it's been adapted and adopted to other people's specific needs. And I thank you very much for the time you spent today listening to it. And I thank you for taking time to try to improve your health and I hope that I was helpful in being able to do that. Thanks for everything. Bye for now.